Welcome to the Ultimate Archive Researcher. Let's search archive papers for contents length in large language models. Let's specify 10 papers, and uh, we are going to return 10 papers along with their titles, authors, abstracts, and URLs. And we have saved them to our SQLite database. Let's search for something mathematical, Colat's conjecture. It'll probably search for, oh, it's only searching for one. It defaulted the one. Let's do another search and say 10 papers. This time it should do 10 papers. Here we go. And we have added those to our database as well. Now we have 21 papers. Let's go ahead and do more. Let's do five papers on prompt engineering. And we have gotten them as well. Now we have 26 papers in our database. Now we can search these papers. We are actually going to do similarity search. I see that our 26 paper has Tetris in it. Let's search for Tetris. Let's see if I'll we'll be able to find it. And when we search for Tetris, the first one is evidence in Tetris. And we always return three results. So the next one is text to image generation, chain reaction of ideas. Let's search another one. Let's say zero divisor. Let's search for divisor. And oh, yeah, sorry. You do have to go back to search again. Let's go back to search and search for divisor. And the first one is zero divisor. Second one is as well. And I guess I guess we have downloaded the zero divisor uh, paper three times. Now, that's actually where the delete comes in. We can actually say delete and we can specify the index numbers. Let's say let's delete 11 and then 12. And when we refresh, those are gone. You can actually delete uh, from your database as well. Code files for this project will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. So this is pretty cool. We are using Alpa Archive uh, Library. Plus we are using TFID Vectorizer and Cosine Similarity from Scikit-Learn. Interesting thing is that if you paid attention, we're not storing any embeddings. We are actually generating them in real time. When we are performing search, this TFID matrix is super fast and it just does it very, very fast over the entire database. Now let's go ahead and review the code and see how it works. For continuing, I would like to quickly mention that you can visit my website at kohive.live and find all the videos that I've created, over 250 of them, on all sorts of subjects. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links and conveniently uh, get the project files. So we're going to build a class called Archive Researcher. And we are going to use the GPT calls class I have created. This just has all the necessary API calls to OpenAI. It just simplifies our life. If you want to know more about it, watch this OpenAI Unified video where I explain it in detail. But we begin by importing our necessary libraries and initialize our Archive Researcher. We initialize first the GPT with GPT calls. It's going to, we're going to say this JSON mode to true makes this the words 1000. This is only going to return a search term for archive plus a number of papers to search for. So it's pretty simple. It probably didn't even need a history, but I just kept it at 1000. Then we initialize our database, create it, initialize it. We add, a, we add the system message, which is you are an intelligent uh, search assistant skilled in finding research papers based on queries, provide responses in JSON with search query and number of papers. Understand and analyze the user's request effectively. Number of papers has to be a minimum of one. We use that. If you add that using the add message method of GPT, uh, OpenAI Unified, the GPT calls class. Then we have a method called get research paper. Oh, and we initialize our TFIDF vectorizer as well from scikit-learn to, to create embeddings. And get research paper just simply takes in a user query and sends it to GPT. And we get a GPT response, which looks like the screen text. It returns a search query and a number of papers to search for. You can modify the system message to really allow GPT some freedom of movement as far as the search queries it returns. Then we get the search query because it's going to be a dictionary when we load it from the JSON. And then we get the number of papers. If just in case number of papers is less than one, we set it back to one. And then we perform an archive search by that. It's sorted by the submitted date, but you can change this if you like. Then we loop over the results initialize an empty dictionary and get the title, author name, and summary, plus the entry ID. And we append them to our dictionary along with uh, inserting them into our database. So we can keep accumulating interesting papers along the way. Then we commit that. We return the papers from that. Display papers is going to uh, take in a list of papers. This is going to be from the search result and it just prints them, prints the information as we see here. And then search in DB takes in a query, fetches all the abstracts, and then using the TFID matrix, it fit transforms it. I believe this creates uh, embeddings for each one of them. Very interesting. And then we vectorize the query as well. 
After that, we perform cosine similarity over the entire TFID matrix. And then we find the relevant paper indices by arc sorting similarities, and we only get the uh, top three indices. And then we print the most relevant papers, and then we print them. So I guess this display papers actually happens right after we actually retrieve the papers from archive. This, this method is here. You can actually comment it out right here somewhere in the uh, run function, but we are getting there. And then, so this is how we search. So it's really simple. It's in real time, and we're not really using any embedding storage or anything like that. And it works. This is really interesting. And then we have a delete papers, which we can enter. Remember, when we delete it, you can enter index numbers of the uh, papers, and it will actually fetch them, delete them, and then execute that deletion. It's a database operation. And then we have the reindex DB, which actually you know creates a temporary table and whatnot and reorders it. I just didn't want to have, let's say we delete three, and then we have one, two, four. So I just reordered them with this uh, method. And then we have our run loop, which takes in a user query, pretty much enter your research interest type search or delete to delete papers. That's it. If we search, we perform uh, a search in DB. If it's delete, we perform delete papers. And otherwise, we just get the research papers using the user query. It's very simple, but it's really powerful. I mean, this, this is really interesting. Like we can search for all sorts of things. Before continuing to play around with our ultimate archive researcher, I just want to mention that if you became a become a patron patron you can find over 200 cool project files i really spend 30 to 40 hours a week sometimes 50 to try to find interesting ideas and try to bring them to life and if you become a patron you will have access to all the code files and if you decide to do that i appreciate your support so let's just go ahead and download a bunch of papers I'm going to search for computational efficiency and download 20 papers. Let's add them to our database. This is all very fast. As you can see, now we have 45 items. Let's download 50 papers on fractal geometry, even though I made a typo. Now our uh, database has 95 records. As you can see, let's, let's download 30 papers on fusion. There we go. And uh, Let's go ahead and search for text the video for 20 papers on that. Let's get those as well. I'm realizing we are getting some repeat papers because the things we're searching are kind of uh, similar to one another. And that's why we might have some uh, duplicates. Maybe it's good to add a method to uh, delete the duplicates. Maybe we'll do that towards the end of the video. But now we have 145 records. And let's get 30 more papers on reinforcement learning, 30 papers on uh, reinforcement learning. I am really not able to spell it right, but no worries. GPT is going to correct it for us. Now we got the 30 papers on reinforcement learning. Now we can search, like see here, graph neural networks, which is called GNNs. Let's search for that. Let's see how this real-time search works. Oh, we did have to switch to search. I forgot. Let's do that. Search. And that's the search for Genon. And it's incredibly fast. We are searching over 176 records. And it immediately returned uh, results. And it found graph neural network. Let's, I mean, this is just incredible. I do have to go back into search. And let's search for fractal. And here we have our fractal results. I am actually working on the add, uh, adding, removing duplicates, but as you can see, like target score matching was found uh, three times. So these peaking. So if your search queries are similar to one another, and we are since we are sorting the papers uh, by by submission date, we're gonna get some duplicates. So let's make sure that we can delete those duplicates. Okay, actually, the way we implemented it is actually to check well before. So we download the papers before adding it to the database. We check, and if no duplicate is found, we add it, otherwise we print the statement. So let's actually go ahead and do the same, some of the searches again. Let's break out of this and rerun it. Since we already have a lot of papers, so this is going to work for future, right? Uh, so we didn't implement the system to delete the duplicates, but we are going to eliminate duplicates from the beginning. But since we created this database, it's going to have some duplicates, but we can certainly see if it's going to allow duplicates in so let's download what do we fractal geometry and papers let's see we should get some print statements saying that yeah see all these papers exist in the database so skipping and it did not add it 
and we had 176 records and none of them have changed because we already had the 10 papers already in the database. So this is good. If I were to restart, delete the database and restart it, this should prevent from duplicates from happening. So this is it. Uh, I hope you like this and I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments or in the Discord server. I'll put the link to the I call I have Discord in the description. Also, if you get some time, check out some of the other apps I built, such as CodeHive, which has 900 plus GPT powered chat applications. These are all free, and here are the codes. You can use this to get some ideas, perhaps for a new business idea or just experimental stuff. Also, I built an app called AutoStreamer, which auto creates content so you can record it or do live streams and build course websites. It does this in real time. I actually have a live stream at the website you can watch showing what it can do and it actually builds a website while it's streaming and here's the sample website we built in the live stream and it actually uh, access modifiers public does it along with audio so introduction to test not only that you can live stream and record live generation of courses it actually at the end creates websites which you can deploy for educational purposes or for your team or for yourself personally also i built a free app called five fast python the link for this will be in the description. So you just select your level. Just by clicking, you learn some new Python concepts. And once you've seen some of this stuff, some of the topics, you can refresh the topics and it'll fetch new topics. You can, you can keep doing it and, uh, until you find something you're interested in and continue to refresh the topics or change your level right here. I hope you'll enjoy it. I'll put the link in the description. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.